Welcome everybody to the Mylio Photos Coffee Break. Today we're going to be talking about using external editors with Mylio Photos. And to help me do that, I have my very good friend and former co-host of the Luminar Coffee Break, Vanelli here with us, and he's the director of education over at Skylum Software. So he also uses Mylio Photos to organize and he uses Luminar extensively for really cool creative edits. So we're going to be talking a bit about that today. But before we jump into Vanelli's presentation, hmm. I wanted to share a quick little shortcut I've discovered that's made my life uh, easier. <laughs> oh, hello, Greg. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and I'll meet you really quick. All right. And if anybody has questions as we go through, feel free to unmute and ask your questions. But I do ask that if you're not talking, if you could keep your mic muted just to keep other ambient sounds out of the mix for everybody else, that would be awesome. But back to this little shortcut that I've discovered. So if you use Mylio Photos on a mobile device, Thank you'll you. notice if you've sent that photo, a photo out to an external editor, let's say you're using Photoshop Express or you're using Snapseed or something else, you can use the share menu within that app to send that photo back to Mylio Photos. And what that does is it creates an inbox folder. So let me show you what that looks like when it pops up on my computer. So, here we are in Mylio. Let me get this zoom window out of the way here. There we go. And if I go into my folders view, double click on that to go to the top level, you'll see here is my inbox folder. And then this are um, photos that I edited on mobile apps, but there's also some stuff here that I edited on my computer and it makes it easier when you're working with an external editor because it gives you a place to put those if that external editor doesn't automatically save it back to the original folder. So what we can do is grab that inbox. I'm gonna right click on that and say show in finder. So this gives me the inbox folder and I'm gonna show you on Mac, it's very similar on Windows, but you can grab that inbox folder and drag it over here into your favorites for shortcuts. So now I can quickly and easily get to that inbox from wherever I'm at, whatever app I'm saving from. So what we can do with that here, let me actually go back out of that. I'm gonna quickly do an edit and then I'm gonna hand off to Vanelli, but I'm not sure if he's used this workflow before. So I wanted to give it a try. So let's go ahead and grab an image and I'm gonna go up to the photo menu and choose open with Luminar Neo. And I'm gonna pop back to the catalog. So it looks like it pulled up a different image. Okay, to my single image edits, there's that one that I just opened. Go over to the edit tab. And we'll just do a nice quick edit here. I'll do my enhance AI. Go into structure, we'll add a little bit of structure. And we'll call that good. It's just a very simple edit. Now, if I go up here to the export menu, you can do this from the file menu as well and say save to disk. It doesn't automatically default to saving it back to that original folder. I'd have to hunt through all of my folders to find where that photo goes. Instead, I can just choose inbox and make my settings here what I want. That looks good. I'm gonna change that resolution to 300 because I like to have a nice big high resolution file and I hit save and that's gonna put it back into that inbox folder in Mylio Photos. So now I can jump back over to Mylio, go back to that top level folder and into inbox. And once this has a chance to scan, sometimes it can take a minute, but there it is. I think that might actually be a different, different photo, but it's one from the same shoot. Sometimes it takes a moment to come in, but it'll bring it back into this folder. You can either leave it here in the inbox, and that's kind of a central place for stuff that you've edited, or you can easily then right click on the Im image and say move to folder and choose where that needs to go and move it back to the folder where you want it. So that's my little quick shortcut for you for working with external editors and how to easily get those photos back into Mylio. It saved me a ton of time having that shortcut there in my finder, and I hope that helps you guys too. So with that, oh, nice. I want to turn the floor over. Does yeah, there a question? Want, yeah, Andy, hey, before, you, before you turn it over, hi, how are you? Um, before you I'm turn good. it over, I wanted to mention, I used, I've been using the inbox almost immediately after I got on Mylio, and the reason I, I went to that technique was because at the time, if you had two Apple devices and you were using iCloud sync, you'd get double images in your in your system. So I turned mm -hmm. off the auto sync from Mylio for two reasons. A, I didn't want the double images. 
but B, I wanted to be able to pre-process things before they got lost somewhere in the mountain of subdirectories and folders and everything else. So I bring, uh, I don't have any auto posting out of, out of photos into Mylio. I, I delete the things that were just there for holding. I was saving something. And when I'm, I've got my photos cleaned up, whether it's on my iPad or my iPhone, I just highlight them all and hit the share and inbox. And then once I've done my edits and calling and whatever else I need to do, then I move them to the date folder and to an album if it's necessary. Actually, that's my awesome. first uh, the album first and the date folder. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, my, my catalog really well. is, yeah, I mostly go by year, month, and then date. Me so. too. Yep. Yeah, it was a godsend right. for me because I copied out of Lightroom because my Lightroom was all year, 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 year. That was a nightmare. <laughs> so I just <laughs> luckily I had enough hard disk space I could do a copy, and and that's that's how why I, I I that's how I found out about Inbox, and I've been using it ever since, and have no need to go back. Yep. Uh, Fran asks if that shortcut is written up. Not yet, but it is on my list to do. So I'll get it added to the manual and I'll also do a short tutorial to post in the community about it. But I wanted you guys to see it first, especially since we're talking about external editors today. So with that, I want to turn the floor over to Vanelli. Um, really, really great friend of mine, awesome photographer, talented photo editor. So Vanelli, the floor is yours. Well, hello everyone. I'm going to start by sharing my screen. So here I am in my Leo. Now this what was a recent shoot that I did for a family over the weekend. Um, now, ironically, uh, I, like if this were strictly a family photo shoot, if it was strictly just for me to teach the or just to photograph the family, it would have been so much easier. But this was for an art director and for a talent agency. So I had to treat it as if all four of them were individual models. So um, it took two hours. Typically it would have taken me 15 minutes to get, this, to get the job done. This took over two hours because I had to do individual photos for everyone. Well, this is how my Leo helped me out. Um, and the, 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 simple, the simple procedure is me importing and so all of my images into my hard drive at the system level. So I bring them into the system okay. level. And since it's in my underscore photography folder, Mylio picks it up right away. So there's nothing I have to do with Mylio. It picks it up. It finds it. It does what it needs to do. And it worked out great. Um, so what I ended up doing was this. I have each of these, th this right here. So I, I, I separated <clears throat> the entire shoot. I brought them all under one. Then from here, I took all of these here, they're just families, and made a separate folder of just families. And then for each of the person, like the mother, the little girl, the father, and the daughter, I made separate folders just for them. Now, I did that on my main hard drive. Milo hasn't synced yet with my external drive, and that's where I'm pulling this from. So my main hard drive is where I store my original images, Milio then grabs them, or I'm sorry, uh, a backup software grabs them, puts them onto an external drive as a backup, and then Milio is working off the backup drives. And Angela, you know why I had to do that, right? I love Milio so why? much. I went out and bought, I went out and bought another 12 terabyte hard drive because our Drobos <laughs> for Mac was working great, but mm -hmm. Drobo for whatever reason. Um, the Drobo NAS, I'm sorry, the DAS, the desktop um, attachment wasn't working. The, the network one was phenomenal, but there was something in Drobo with Windows that had prevented it talking to Windows properly. So Mylio couldn't grab it. There was nothing on Mylio's part. It was a Drobo issue. So to solve it, I just bought a 12 terabyte external drive and then backed them up over there. And that's my Mylio drive which stays on 24 seven. So now that I have them in, um, into my machine, uh, forgive me on this. If I just want to show my flags, do I come up here? Mm -hmm. Filter. Yep. All right. And then flags. Okay. 
So I just want to show my flags here. How come just the flags aren't appearing? You have to select the ones that are flagged. So you can either select unflagged or flagged. Just okay, below. Okay, I, I want flagged. Flag. Yep. There we go. There you go. Thank you. All right. So You're welcome. I, I'm just grab these just to show you guys, make it easier. Um, here's a great example. Uh, Luminar is phenomenal at so many things. A digital asset manager, it's not. We never claim to be. That's why I love my Leo so much, because this is my game. I don't need Lightroom anymore. I don't need to use extensive portfolio. Uh, you Mac people have it easy because you could use Finder to find all your stuff. With us poor Windows people, <laughs> we try, and it just doesn't. You can't use it like you can this. So here I have this image here that I want to work with. And what's so cool about it, it just with a simple right click and open with Luminar Neo. I'm going to hand it off to Neo. And there it is, fast as lightning. Now that I have this up, I want to just do a real quick edit. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on editing these images. So if I just have to get them out quick, I'm going to select presets and let the for this photo give me some, some suggestions on what tools it thinks will work its best. Or I can just click my own presets that I've created. So here's one of this Jaden here. Uh, we'll use this one. And I'll just grab one of my favorite ones for Jaden. Click on it. It's doing its thing. There it is. Now, this is something she would want, the over-the-top edits. However, the art director, I'm going to hide that layer. That's what the art director would want. So the modeling agency and the, the art director would tell me, nope, Vanelli, submit it like this. This is what we need. We don't want the over-the-top um, edits with the, the light flares and stuff like this which is fine. So I was able to create this in a matter of what, a few seconds, two versions of it. One version for the family, one version for the art director. Well, now that I have this set, I'm gonna export it to a folder. And what I like to do is, if you notice here, under my main drive, my D drive, I have a subfolder called underscore photography. Now I put underscore just so it'll appear up on top. So I have my underscore photography. Inside there is where I keep my subfolders. Now I do have adult models, adult children, or adult models, um, children models, and so on. But because this was a family, I put them down under their own. And now I can create an underscore complete subfolder. Once I select this folder, I can edit the image to that particular folder. I'm gonna cancel out of it, because I've already done it. So once I did that, well, if I go back to my Leo, because I've already created a folder called underscore complete, it's gonna automatically appear inside uh, my Leo for me. Now, for me, the way I have it set up right now, I have to give it a few moments to transfer from my main hard drive over to my external drive. So it'll appear in my Leo. But the point I'm getting at is it's so cool that you set it, forget it. Once I have my images inside my Leo, I create the folder inside that folder, it's added. Then any of the, any of the changes I make, I can just drop it back into that folder and it's good to go. My Leo has it. And most importantly, I have it on my phone. So now that I did all of that, if I'm out and about, let's say I batch process the images, I'm waiting for them to appear, we go out to eat, and yes, Angela, we go out for sushi. We go out for sushi, <laughs> I'm waiting for all of them to appear. I just have to look at my phone and boom, the images will appear on my phone that, that have been added to that catalog. And now I can just send it off to the art directors while we're enjoying our uh, delicious lunch or dinner. So, but that's how I, I love, I loved how my little 
is used as a digital asset manager for me, and I can just bounce right back and do what I have to do. Um, I'll do one more. Move to my desktop. So, and again, here are the image, here are this. And by the way, Angela, um, Aftershoot was another another software that that I got hooked into. And I love weren't using all three. Aftershoot selects and calls my images for me. Of course, I can decide. It shoots it into my MyLeo directory. It's here in MyLeo. I have it all set. Now, I can either start in MyLeo or start in Neo and gather my images that I want to edit, grab them, put them in my um, underscore complete folder, and now I have them on all of my devices. All right? So let's do... That's awesome. Yeah, let's let's do the father. This is such a good looking family. Um, right click, open with Luminar Neo. Now, because I have Neo selected, um, it appears here, Angela, because I came up here and chose it. Is that why it automatically appears? So it's because open it's the with. last editor that you used. Gotcha, perfect. So maybe somebody asked me that, Cabasi, I think it was, asked me that's well, his doesn't, his, his was Photoshop. So I like what, I, I see what you're saying. So whatever the last photo editor was, so they're not showing favoritism. It's which, whichever <laughs> was the last editor, it's here. At first Correct. I thought, oh, wow, Angela, that's pretty cool. You have a lot of pull with my Leo. No, um, <laughs> right click, edit in, in Neo. Here we go. And by the way, when, when it comes in a Neo, it's coming in under single image edits. And then of course I can drag and drop them where I want them, but I like it right here. So here's the father. Again, we can start with a preset and I already showed you how he did that. Um, give it a second to render. And I can start with a preset here, which in my opinion, as an educator, these presets are a phenomenal starting point because what it really does is it's, it's helping you become self-taught to where the program is, it's like your auto mode on your camera. That's the best way to explain it. It's like auto mode on your camera. When in doubt, please don't listen to these egocentric photographers that say only shoot manual mode. You're not a real photographer unless you're shooting manual mode. Really, if you're out there shooting and you're like, I'm so exhausted. I'm looking, I'm not getting the settings correctly. Pop it in auto mode, take a picture, look at what the camera said. If the camera tells you these are the settings, now there's your base. If you have a mirrorless camera, well, then it's a lot easier because you can just, what you see is what you get. But for those that don't have the mirrorless, there's your auto mode. It helps you streamline quickly where a good starting point is. And that's what's happening here. So here's, a, here's my starting point. I like it a lot. A little, in my opinion, just a little too um, saturated. So I can come over to my edits. I have a choice. Now, here's what I was talking about, how it's teaching me what tools were used. So it's showing me it developed it with RAW. Okay, I'm going to start from down here. And when I do, oh, not sure if you heard that, Angela. <laughs> that was a was loud Florida thunder? thunderstorm. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. So <laughs> uh, once, I, once you click on one of the edits, the other ones are invisible because you're dealing just with this edit. I do want to change the profile to my, to my camera. Not that big of a change. It's fine. Um, I like what it chose. I mean, it, it did a very good job. Look at that. From this to this. So it did a good job there. Um, color, details. All right, let's look at the face, for example. This is pretty cool. Watch his face. Look at this. If I didn't light it properly, I could actually pinpoint as if I had an assistant with me with a reflector 
bouncing right back up to the subject's base. Now, I purposely took these without an assistant, without um, flash photography, because look at the catch lights and designs. Give it a second to render. Look at that. So I wanted to show proper placement uh, where we were is what caused the lighting to be evenly lit and just a beautiful light coming across, beautiful bokeh in the background. All right. Um, I think the only thing I'd go back to develop for a moment. Let's see the black and white. Yep, they already did it. Look at this. So th this is what I would have done. And it's neat that AI figured that out on my own, on its own. But I am going to go back to face. And his eyes already look really good. Um, I, the enhancement looks good. If I wanted to, in this case, I wouldn't. I could change his eyes to green. Um, look at that. If I want to, I could change his eyes to gray. It's a little more bluish to me. Let's see what blue does. Blue is blue, blue. Good. So if if I did a, a horrible job at um, lighting the face, or if there were a, a lens blur or camera shake, sometimes I'll just do this to the eyes, and now everything looks sharp again. Um, I'm going to leave them as original, pop a little flare underneath it. Good. And now I'm going to jump down to skin. And because he's a man, I don't usually like to soften too much. Now, this looks a little, you would think it looks pixelated. From this distance, it looks great. And that's the viewing distance. I'd bring it back just a bit, just because I don't want him to have a, a feminine look. And then the rest of it looks really good, but that color is bothering me a little bit. So I could add additional tools. I'll come down to color, and I want to desaturate the image just a bit, and that's global. So everything was desaturated. Now I just want to bring back with vibrancy or vibrance is I want to bring back the muted colors. So saturation took out most of the colors, a global effect. Vibrance is going to bring back just the muted of those colors. Let's see if there's a color cast. Okay, not bad. And the visibility icon helps you see what you're doing. Let me bring it back just a little bit. And now once I select it, if I go back to edits, you'll see that it appeared right here. So the neat thing about Luminar Neo is I can have multiple instances of color of or any other tools. So if, let's say, um, in fact, we'll do it. I want to add a little, let's say, structure to the whole scene. Now, since structure is human aware, he won't be affected. Only the, only the background and his clothing will be affected. So I'm gonna bump up structure AI a bit and boost is gonna amplify that. Now I'm going overboard just so you can see the, the effect. Well, in fact, let me go way, way overboard. Okay. Notice how it's not affecting him. All right. So I look at this and think, you know what? I love it, but I hate what it did to the background. So I could, I have two choices here. I could either accept this, these settings, and then under mask, just brush in the areas or paint that texture in areas that I want. In fact, we'll do that real quick. So I can go to erase, I'm sorry, paint, and I'm only gonna paint in the areas that I want that texture to be. And notice it's no longer around here. It's only where the red mask is appearing.
good. So I want him to have that texture. Let's see how this will look. Okay, that, that, that contradicts the, um, uh, the depth of field. So I'll come to erase. And I'll just come back over and erase the areas I don't want. All right. So that was one option. Another option could be thinking global versus uh, local. I could use the structure AI again. And I can apply it. But last time, this time, I'm going to go to the negative. And now I made all the background blurry. And then from here, do the same thing with the mask. I can come in and just paint in the areas here that I want that blur effect to increase. Now, I don't like the blur. I'm just doing this as an example that will go to an extreme just to show you. But this time, instead of using the brush tool, let's try Mask AI. Now, Mask AI is going to analyze this image. It's looking for, you know, skies, man-made objects, a human, a person in the scene. Um, the shrubbery and so on. Once it, it is done with its analyzing, it looks, it sees there's a human. Let's see floral. Yep, so look at that. So it, it did a pretty good job selecting that. I don't know what it was thinking about the water. Let's see what it, what it saw. Nope, that's not water. So I'm going to uncheck it. Mountains. Not a whole lot. A man-made ground, the natural ground, all right? Well, I like how it selected this here. There we go. I like how it selected that. So I can come back and continue now with the brush. In fact, you know what? Let me show where the mask is. So I'm going to click down here. And I'm going to show where it's selected. There we go. And now with the brush... I'll come back in and just start painting the rest of the area that I want blurred. And then I'll turn off the mask. And I just simply do that by going to the mask actions and get rid of the show. So now I can make adjustments independently from the image itself. So, so where I masked, that's where I could decide what I wanted to do. Now, like I said, in this case, this was just an example, just to overboard to show you what it looks like. If I click the back arrow key, it resets it all. And if I come over here to edits, it'll still appear, but there'll be no settings attached to it. So I can just delete it. All right. Notice everything I'm doing right now, technically, in fact, I don't need this one. I'll reset it because that wasn't that big of a deal. All right. And for the rest of it, I really like how this looks. So I'll come down here to actions, save preset. And now I'm going to save this preset and we'll give it a name. And notice it takes the thumbnail, which is pretty cool. So this way I'll remember. I'm going to call this Nick Natural Light. All right. And now that I have that set, from here, any image, which we saw, in fact, I'll go back to my Leo. So any of the images here with Nick in them, that I had that exact same area, the lighting, the conditionings. Let's find it. There he is. Right here. So all of these images right here that I have, I could just have those inside Luminar Neo and just add that preset to all of those images there. And now I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about it. Um, or I don't, have to, I don't have to independently fix each and every single one of those images. All right. So let me go back to Neo. And once again, I would take it, export it, 
to that, <clears throat> should be complete folder, and then all those images will appear inside my Leo, right? And one last thing, Angela, from here, I could just click on, click on the plus icon, browse the folder. Here we go. I want, yep, under photography, I want to grab that families folder. So once I grab this families folder, anything in that folder and the subfolders will appear inside Luminar Neum. So now I have all of the images along with the completed ones inside here. And any changes I make, any changes I make inside, ne inside Neo, and I have to export them. I export them to the completed folder. It'll automatically appear inside Neo for me. I'm sorry, inside my Leo for me under this completed folder. And now it just synchronized it across all my devices. All right. So there we have it, Angela. And I'm hoping I didn't free. I froze. One moment. <laughs> well, at least your audio yeah, is coming gonna... through. So that's good. Yeah. So I'll unfreeze. I'll fix that in a moment. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Angela, uh, we can take questions right now. Yeah, so there was one um, trying to go back up here in the chat from John Crawley, and he was asking about your workflow and how you have your, your import set up. So your main drive where you import to, that's not the folder that Miley is watching. You have that mirroring to another drive where Miley exactly. watches it, correct? Exactly. Awesome. Which, yeah, but now after, like after doing this with you right now, because I, I never really had to worry about... Um, I didn't have to worry about all of it being like immediately inside um, onto my phone right away until mm -hmm. this photo shoot. And that's when I realized, oh, shoot, maybe, just maybe I should instead of, um, well, no, I have to. I still have to do it because Drobo is still not, when, when the company comes back, um, hopefully after the company comes back, We'll figure out if mm -hmm. we're able to um, have them update some of the stuff that they're doing. So for those you of you who I mean? aren't aware, Drobo is a company that makes enclosures that hold multiple drives and it's a, a RAID setup, but they have their own proprietary software that runs inside the Drobo. They're a really cool machine, but unfortunately they recently declared chapter 11 bankruptcy. They are hopefully reorganizing, hopefully going to come back better and stronger than ever. But the future of that company is a little bit up in the air. So uh, Vanilla uses Drobos. I have a Drobo. They're very, very prevalent in the photography industry. So a lot of us who use those devices are kind of sitting here going, okay, what's going to happen <laughs> with the future of Drobo? Yeah. But in case you're wondering what a Drobo is, because not everybody knows, that's what that is. I'm and they, they are that. cool devices. Yeah. And there's a lot of different RAID devices that are available. Um, another question we have here from Anthony is, do I understand correctly that XMPs created by Luminar Neo or other external editors are not stored in MyLeo? Um, so Luminar Neo does not create XMP files. What happens when you send a raw file to Neo is it just sends the raw file. So whatever in, in, um, information is baked into that raw file, like your capture time, things like that, those will carry through. But when you save that new TIFF back to Mylio Photos, it's a new file. It doesn't have the XMP that was associated with the original. So any additional metadata that you've had, you'll want to copy that over from the original to your edited TIFF file. And then the other question you had here was, let's see here. Um, I have a light here and it's getting spots in my eyes. Give me a second here. Is it necessary to create a TIFF to ensure all of the edits are embedded in the Mylio image? That's my choice to do because I like to have big fat files to work with if I want to keep working with them <laughs> in some other program. And I want to have all of the information available to me to do that. You can certainly save a JPEG, you can save a PSD. There's other file formats you can use. Most people are going to choose either a TIFF or a JPEG, but it's completely up to you. So let's take a look yeah. here at some because of the other questions. Yeah, because TIFF, like, TIFF, like you said, Angela, is um, lossless. It's lossless compression. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to re-edit that folder down the line, that image down the line, and you don't have it stored in whatever, whether it's Lightroom or, or, or 
Neo if you don't have the original that you started with the edits with, um, you're not going to lose any quality if you make additional changes. Exactly. Let's see here. Anthony asks, if one stops using a particular external editor, how is the image in Mylio impacted by the absence of the XMP from an editing perspective? The file that comes back to Mylio is going to be whatever you save. So if you have that big fat TIFF that has all of that editing information, you're going to have all of that editing information and all of that data in that file. The XMP that's associated with the original, a lot of that information, let's say your title, your caption, your keywords, you can copy that over in Mylio to the TIFF file. It'll create an XMP file from Mylio, and that XMP file is readable by most um, image organization programs. So like uh, Vanelli mentioned earlier, Luminar Neo is an amazing editing program. It does have some basic organization tools, but it is pretty limited. And one of those limitations is it doesn't read or write XMP files. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's yeah. see here, other questions. And, and Angela, on that note, on that note, um, I always give you credit for this. In fact, I did that this morning. Um, Angela coined the phrase, <laughs> she coined the phrase project-based catalogs. And I think when we did this, you had no idea you even came up with that. Now, God, that was profound. No, not really. That was. Project-based project, project <laughs> catalogs. She goes, that sounds cool. Angela, you said it. <laughs> um, so she <laughs> created this. And, and what's neat about the project-based catalogs is now, just same thing with Lightroom. You could do the same thing with Lightroom, Neo, anything that has a catalog-based system. If you put all of your eggs in one basket, you better really protect that basket in case something happens. Or you switch to what yeah. Angela recommended, project-based catalogs, meaning this family that I just did, this is a project-based catalog. It's, it's their family. The, the images edited, all that stuff inside Luminar Neo is their own catalog. When I'm done with this, boom, I can archive it. We're good to go, done. It's not going to appear in any of my other catalogs. So if this were to crash, then I'm only losing a small amount of uh, edits. But keep in mind, we've exported all those edits, so, so I'm safe. Um, so what I love about Mylio is I can have my entire 13 terabytes of uh, images stored in that particular um, program and then have it bounce off to all the other um, applications and other devices I have. All right, here's another question. Can we quickly define XMP? So an XMP is a sidecar file. It's a file that hangs out next to your original and it stores metadata. So in Mylio Photos, when you change a date, you add keywords, you add GPS data, any of that additional information that you're adding about your photo, that gets stored in that XMP file. So you wanna make sure that stays next to your original file. Um, a lot of that stuff is also stored in the Mylio Photos database. But this way, that XMP file also shows that information, which means you can open up that file with that sidecar file next to it in Lightroom or in a variety of other photo organization tools. And all of that information, or most of that information that is industry standard and transferable, we readable by a variety of different applications. Nice. Let's see, are Fran, you, you mentioned these, these that- These are all from the chat? Do they, these are all from the yeah. chat? <laughs> Don't, yeah. don't they just unmute their mic and ask? <laughs> no, they're much quieter than the Luminar Coffee Break folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Fran asks about um, applications that aren't showing in that photo open with menu. If you're not seeing the application that you want to use and you want to oh. edit with, I put a link to the manual into the chat, and that's going to walk you through how to add additional applications to that. It works a little bit differently for Windows than it does for Mac. So just scroll down to the section that goes over what you need to know. All right, what else are we seeing here? And Jennifer B says, thanks, I had to save metadata and Photoshop elements files, excellent. Are there any other questions? And like Vanelli said, you feel free to go ahead and unmute your mics, ask your questions. Just raise your hand. This is a great time to do that. You can raise your hand too, that works. All right. I, I think it's worth mentioning 
um, Ange Angela, what, what I was talking about in the chat, because I don't think a lot of people really understand that. I know you did because you and I have discussed it before, but you can do fully non-destructive editing using the Smilio to Luminar and back routine. Um, the thing that's mm -hmm. important here is Smilio doesn't, doesn't store the non-destructive edits which is fine because you've still got them, but you got to remember to back up the Luminar catalog. So for instance, if you start with a raw and you tell Milio, I want to edit in Luminar Neo, the raw goes over to Luminar Neo. You edit the raw, it stores those changes in its catalog. When you, when you export it back to, or, or share it back, whichever way you go back to Luminar, you're only bringing back the TIFF or whichever format you choose. You have now no mm -hmm. no you no longer have that non-destructive edit in Luminar, um, excuse me, in Mylio. But if you want to re-edit the picture again, you don't edit the TIFF. Excuse me. If you want to re-edit in Luminar, you don't edit the TIFF. You re-edit the original. And when you edit the original, when Luminar sees it, it'll grab the ARW. Excuse me, the raw. <laughs> I shoot ARW. <laughs> it'll it'll load the raw that it's stored. So you have to remember if you're going to use Luminar and Milio together to back up the Luminar catalog, because otherwise you will lose your non-destructive edits. Yeah, great, well, keep, great. Keep in Thank mind, you for pointing that out. Yeah, but yeah, keep in mind, because they're coming in as a single image edit, it's automatically stored. And then right. Neo, yeah, Neo automatically backs up your catalog for you in the same folder, unfortunately. So yeah. the three, two, one backup concept is three copies of your data, two stored locally, one stored off site. So mm -hmm. if you follow that procedure, then in the cloud, you'll have your, your backups in case somebody comes in and takes all your gear and your two backup supply sources yes. are, are stolen. You have the, the one in the, in the cloud. Um, and for, for back users, it's real simple to restore a backup you, you press your uh, option key, launch Luminar, boom, it asks you where it is. Us poor Windows yeah. people, oh, my Lord, we have to jump through hoops <laughs> because it's the Windows operating system. No answer. Like, I still love my, my Windows. I, I was going to say why. <laughs> I know. I know. Every time I mention that um, or Android, I, I always get uh, sent, sent to the unpopular kids table. In the, in, the, in the cafeteria. <laughs> Can I ask oh, a question? Here, stop laughing. So, <laughs> Mark, who's next? Mark, okay. Mark, can I ask you, um, does uh, the NEO uh, store the information in XMP files or does it have something proprietary? No. <laughs> You're asking him? <laughs> no, that's, yeah. yeah. No, Luminar does not store no, XMP or, or create them, either one. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it stores it separately within only within Luminar Neo. Yes, your raw file. This is why I was talking about why you need to back up your your Luminar catalog. And and Vanelli's right; it does back up locally, but that's not a useful backup for people. You've got to get it off at least out of that folder, but preferably off the machine. Um, it, when you back up things, you need to back up the Luminar catalog. There is no XMP with Luminar when you move a raw over there, but you don't need an XMP there because all your edits are stored there in the catalog for that raw. Luminar actually still has the original raw file. It isn't modified. They, they're storing it in their catalog, like Lightroom stores it in, in Lightroom's catalog. So mm -hmm. the, the difference is there is no XMP, but to solve that, when you bring back the TIFF or the JPEG, you just copy the XMP from the original in, in Mylio. You copy the XMP onto your exported Luminar image, and you've got all the XMP info again. Now, because I almost exclusively edit in Luminar now, I don't save back to TIFF because I don't go back to Lightroom. I rarely go to ON1. When I do, I do save back to TIFF. But as, as, Miley, as Luminar is getting more and more features, I have less and less need to go elsewhere. Um, and now with noiseless AI coming, I don't even need to go to Topaz anymore. So <laughs> yes, I've already bought the upgrade. Um, so, so I only save back to JPEG. 
because all I need is the finished version to to distribute to people, and it saves space. Um, although space isn't a real concern anymore, but anyway, that's why I saved the JPEG. It's quicker to save. It's it's it, visually it's no different, and unless you need to blow it up huge. Um, yeah. you know, when I'm printing to wall murals, yes, I save back to TIFF. As a TIFF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's funny you're saying that. Um, as Scott Kelby, uh, we had a long discussion about this, and he said to me, Benelli, he goes, mm, maybe I'm different, but, and he said this jokingly, it's not serious. He goes, I guess I'm so good, I don't need to go back and change my edits years <laughs> later. And we started laughing. <laughs> Um, and then when I showed him an image, do you remember way back in the day when spot coloring was cool? You know, yep. a black and white with a red rose. So yep. I showed him, he's like, oh, man, you want to go back to that one now, don't you? Um, and I'll be the first to admit, you know, sometimes like I, I have a lot, a lot of godchildren. Right, Angela? And so when I go to their mm -hmm. houses, I'll see images I've taken and I'm like, what the frick was I thinking? And I'll take it <laughs> off the wall and I'll, I'll steal it. I'll come home quickly, <laughs> go back and rechange it, re-edit it, slip the new one in. And then when I go to their house again, I slip it back on the wall. <laughs> um, I've got because we all we all go through that stuff, yeah. right, Angela? Um oh, yeah. You, know, you look back at some of your old edits, you're like, ugh. The worst of it is is those of us that date back to the early days of HDR with Trey Ratcliffe, because in those oh, yes. days, yes. the more the more over the top, the better. And then you go back and look yes. at them. You don't even want to re-edit them. Just delete them. <laughs> you go back to the yes. original. Oh, my God. Saturation is the structure of the max. <laughs> All right. Looks like Anthony oh. has a question. Go ahead and unmute, Anthony. Anthony, do we lose you? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Good, good. So when you're on the road and you have a need to edit um, a photo in Mylio, and, but when you come home, you want to go into Luminar to uh, just refine those edits or do something different to the, to the image. Um, is the XMP from Mylio transferred with the Mylio edits to Luminar, or do you have to start from scratch? So there's a couple of questions there. If you... Are, let's say you have a raw file, you edit it in Mylio. If you go and send that to an external editor, Mylio is going to send that original unedited raw. It's not oh. going to send it with your Mylio edits. So what you want to do, if you want to go ahead, if you've already made your crop and you've done a couple of adjustments and you just want to further refine it, what you'll want to do is go to the share menu and export a copy of it. And I would probably do that as a high resolution tip because that's me. And because you want to do more additional editing, and then take that TIFF that's already been cropped and whatever else you've done with it, and then send that to Luminar Neo. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the XMP files are not readable or created by Luminar Neo. So any additional metadata that you've added in Mylio Photos, you'll wanna just copy that over to the new file. So if you've added a title, caption, keywords, just copy and paste from those fields from one photo to the next, and that way you will get those over there and the Mylio will create a new XMP file for that edited image. Thank you. Thanks. You're very welcome. Yeah, I, yeah, Angela, I, just, I just love the fact that now I, here's a good example. Um, a bunch of us were out to eat in New York City and um, at the time, Alex was uh, our CEO and you know, he's praising me and all this stuff I've done. I'm like, oh, thank you. But we had Lori Rubin in, at the table with us and, and I just smiled. And, and I said, but what about this image? And I had Lori's image on my phone. He goes, oh, my God, that's amazing. He said, yeah, Lori took it. And I know Lori, Lori doesn't like being um, highlighted. And she's like, and then, I go, and then we did that jokingly. Never have I ever, you know, people that are drink, never have I ever been in the Smithsonian. You know, and, and she's the <laughs> only one that had the National Archive Museum. So it was cool that I was able to pick that up only because I already had it. But now imagine if those were all of my images on my phone and I could quickly go, oh yeah, here, here it is, bip. And then show people and say, hey, you know, here are some of the stuff I've done in the past. Um, but especially like if you go to your friend's house, they don't want to sit there and look through. I mean, you love the thousand photos you took, you know, on your last burning trip. <laughs> They're going to go, yeah, um, just show me your top five. 
you know, and if you had those top five in that completed folder and you could pull it up in all of its glory, and then they say to you, oh, wow, well, could you send me that? Sure, download, send. Um, I just think that Milo came along. The old Milo, I wasn't too happy with. The new Milo, love it tremendously um, because I'm able to do so much more with it. So, so what you're saying about right. showing your best images from something, I just, I, a few weeks ago, I went on vacation and I, I captured probably close to a thousand frames. Nobody wants to see all 1000 photos, like you said. So I created an album. So I started a new album, master album here for travel and put my trip in here. And so these are all of my edited photos from the trip and a few snapshots that really kind of encapsulate the trip as opposed to having somebody who might want to go through all 1000 of the edited and unedited photos. So it's a great way to use albums. I know Vanilli uses his completed folder. I prefer to use albums. I also have yeah. albums for oh, nice. my portfolio. So edited things. And these mirror, these are the same images that I have on my website. So just different ways to get to your best images, to be able to share them once you have them edited. And, you know, things that I write for different articles. I have those things I submit to my photo club and then, you know, some other family events. So lots of different ways you can use this. You, you, you have to give less a shout out. Less a shout out <laughs> is retirement. Yes. Yeah, let me go back to that real quick here. So, look at this, these two. Um, <laughs> so, I put together <laughs> a slideshow of my husband and uh, mostly my husband. So, this was when he was in, you know, graduating from boot camp. So, he just recently retired from the military nice. a few weeks ago. Um, but, you know, this was him, you know, fresh out of boot camp. And then let me go back here and scroll down to, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Try to find, he had some portraits done. There we go. This was his retirement portrait. So yeah, it encapsulate, encapsulates over 21 years of military service. So that was pretty cool. But nice. there's just so many different ways that you can interact with your photos in Milia Photos and how you can group them. Anthony, did you have another question? I do, Angela. Yeah, the, I recently had need to transfer an image to um, Topaz, uh, mm -hmm. Denoise. And when you're in the Topaz product, you apply the changes that you, you've made in Topaz and it returns it back to the Mylio folder, to the Mylio library as a mm -hmm. denoise tagged image, but it doesn't show up in the Mylio library. So I, I raised a, an earlier question on that. I'm not sure how to achieve access to that image. So one thing I've noticed with Topaz products, and actually I brought this up at a meeting this morning, is that if you're saving it as a denoise or as a, a DNG, um, if you take a raw image over to, let's say, Topaz denoise, run Topaz denoise and save it as a DNG, for some reason, my Leo Photos has trouble reading those files. It reads DNGs that are straight out of cameras. So like a lot of cameras, um, drones and, drones in particular, but some other cameras save DNG files. It reads those just fine, but some of the other application created DNGs, it struggles with. Um, what you could do is save it as a TIFF and it should pop up. Um, but I've had the same issue with the Topaz ones and I'm, I've brought it up to our product team. So hopefully we can get that addressed in the future. Thank you. Can I ask an add on question? If we do transfer it back as a TIFF, now we have a mm -hmm. TIFF and the original image. I don't want both mm -hmm. showing up in Mylio. So um, am I able to flag and then hide one of those images in some way in Mylio? Not yet, but that is something that is coming. In the meantime, what you can do is on that TIFF file, at the end of the file name, so if you have, you know, Scotland123 there, yeah. if you put underscore display, it will automatically stack it with that original raw file. And it'll oh. show the under, underscore display file on top of it. So you're only going to see that edited TIFF. You won't see the underlying raw, but it is still there. So that would also apply potentially to the feedback from Topaz products, putting that? Oh, yeah, that's, on that's the one DNG? way to do it. It's just that it wouldn't help with the DNG, unfortunately, because it's not reading the DNGs. Got it. I'm, okay. I'm getting these uh, the unsupported files for those. I'm, I don't know why. Unsupported. It works with other programs with the Topaz ones. It's it's not great. Thank so, you. And I love Topaz products. They're they're wonderful. All right. Any last minute questions before we sign off for the yep. day? 
So the, there's no. John Wells here. I didn't recognize him his glasses until he put them on. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, hi, Angela. He, he was doing a Superman Clark Kent. Yeah. Super, Superman Clark Kent on us here. There he is. <laughs> I have one more. It's, this is probably more just a suggestion to maybe go back to the product team with. Is It's possible to have a feature uh, like we used to use in Lightroom and Photoshop, where if we, when I wanted to take a uh, a photo to Luminar, I'd open it as a Photoshop smart object, and then smart object into Luminar, and then Luminar, all I did was hit apply. The catalog was never needed for anything; it was never used. Um, it, it was a neat capability, and it. Luminar is not the only program that doesn't natively just not put things back where they're found from. So it's it's not like this is a, really a Luminar issue. It's it's an issue of how the interface works more than anything. And I'm wondering if that's a feature that could be looked at in the future because almost everybody it, at some point has to go past the edit capabilities of, of Mylio. So if you have Photoshop, you can do that just like you do with Lightroom now. You can open your raw file in Photoshop. Right. It'll open it in Adobe Camera Raw. You can use similar Lightroom controls there and then open it from that as a smart object into full Photoshop. Yeah. From no, there, I, you can add your plugins, do all that stuff too. I understand. That's what I used to do. And it's a really yeah. neat interface. Gotcha. It works very well. My question is, is that something that could possibly be looked at for Mylio to be able to, to pass oh, through sure, like sure. a smart object? I will pose it to our team. We'll Thank see. You. <laughs> and I know it's, it, it, it's it's a big jump. It's it's not a trivial task, but it would really make life easy for people. And and you know, be, being the top editor in the world is obviously not Milio's goal. <laughs> so it's got perfect, no. perfectly suitable editing for you know an iPhone shooter. But for people that have got cameras, um, you need more power. <laughs> and it, it is kind of a jump a jump into hoops thing. Otherwise. <laughs> So awesome. that was it. No problem. Well, I will pass that on. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was a great group and tons of wonderful questions. Thank you so much, Vanelli, for joining me today. I hope we can do this again soon. It's always fun co-hosting with yes. you. I want to wish you guys all a great day. Uh, this was recorded. So if you want to go back and rewatch anything, we'll try to get that posted within the next couple of days. And you'll see that on the community under the Coffee Break replays. So with that, wish you guys a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.